Hello and welcome to the uh, post-match reaction to Glendale um, at uh, Seattle. And the game finished a Glendale oops, win with the score go 15-19. No and uh, joining me this evening, I have Grant, the rugby evangelist. How are you doing, sir? Yeah, all right. How are you doing, Paul? Very good. And we have Tony Ridnell, the USA Eagle, from uh, the ground. Let me, let me just try and go in up. It's all a bit loud out there, but for him. Um, so, Grant, let's, let's um, kick it off. Uh, a, it started off dry, but it, it turned into a bit of a wet game, and that really kind of could define the quality uh, that we were going to have uh, of, of play, didn't it? Yeah, it really did. I mean, and, and once the wet ball came on, I mean, they were already handling issues from Glendale the in their person. back line, and once they got the oh, once here. the uh, ball got wet, that exacerbated them, and they really had to work to to basically keep the handling errors from causing them problems. And, you know, that's that, that, that hurt them in the second half. So, you know, one of the things Seattle did is they, that's one of the kicking game went back and forth. You're trying to see that kicking game, people trying to get that territory and get some scrimmaging going off in there. And perhaps if there was a knock on and, and inviting those knock ons to happen. So kudos to Seattle for trying to try to play that kicking game and get those knock ons going so they can get those, uh, Scrums in deep, and then and then of course Glendale having problems at their loose head prop, and they just could not uh they could not make the adjustments uh, until late. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they they had uh, the the ascendancy in the scrum all the way through until um I want was it um, uh, Mark, uh, Metcher went off. Um, and yeah, they, Metcher went off. They couldn't really uh, make that count in the first half. In the second half, they got a bit more joy out of it. Uh, but you've got to say Glendale, even with a scrum that was under pressure going backwards, got the ball out quickly and stopped themselves from having that yet and st- stopped, stopped uh, Seattle from make, taking full advantage of that side of things. Yeah, that's true. The, All right, Tony's in a quiet place now. Tony is I in am, a quiet I'm place sorry, now. boys. So actually, there, are not many, there, are not many, there are not many quiet places at Starfire Sports, I can tell you that. It's amazing. <laughs> so, yeah, why don't you give us an idea as to a, a, a bit of the, the atmosphere at the game? As you say, it, it was wet, but uh, that didn't scare people off. No, no, no. I got here about three hours before the game. The youth were playing. It was it never got sunny, but it wasn't raining all day like it was supposed to, like it broke out in the second half. I mean, they definitely broke it out. The rain broke out in the second half, so changed the game. But everyone was here, and it's Seattle, so we kind of expect this deal. It's it's really not a problem. It, it created this very Seattleish uh, environment. And do we have the kind of what we sometimes see sort of pre-American uh, football games with the tailgate parties and stuff, or were people in the ground watching the, uh, the pre-game uh, entertainment? Well, I, I, t- I took some videos, you know, at the game two hours before it was getting packed, and then 30 minutes to an hour before the game, it was it was absolutely uh, just jamming. There are about six, uh, six food trucks, and there's a stadium food truck, and there's more, you know, there's beer in the stadium, there's beer outside the stadium. Uh, you know, there's plenty of places to get drinks and food and, and, uh, and take care of yourself. So it's, it's, it's just a great atmosphere before the game. The Seattle crowd is remarkable. And I just personally was really proud today about the whole respect to kicker thing. So I, I, it was enjoyable, although I wanted to scream at Will McGee a couple of times myself. <laughs> <laughs> and that has been one of the hot topics, hasn't it, over the uh, – I've seen on, on, uh, on social media is around respect the kicker. I think that comes from a lot of people watching European rugby because in, down in New Zealand – um, Cooper, Quay Cooper, for example, gets booed an awful lot, uh, and it's very much a British. Well, thing. That's because he's, he's Quay Cooper. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, that has nothing to do with anything yeah. other than he's Quay Cooper. <laughs> Maybe so, but the, we don't have the same respect the kicker thing down here in New Zealand uh, that we do that they have in the UK. And I, I think a few, few people got perhaps a little bit precious about that. Um, yeah, it's a British thing. In France, you get booed. Down in the southern hemisphere, huh. you get booed. So yeah, it's anyway. Up in Belfast, you don't get booed at all. You don't hear pin. You can hear a pin drop in oh, Belfast. Absolutely, in, in, absolutely. in Belfast or some like Leicester at Tiger Stadium, absolute silence. And, and, and some kickers say actually they find silence more unnerving than actually booing. If you've got fifty thousand people, well, that's the purpose. <laughs> 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 so, anyway, let's get on to this game then. Um, I think early doors, Glendale set their set their stall out. They were going to kick for territory. They were going to play in the right part of the field. 
they were going to yep. play intelligent rugby tonight um, and, and not try and do too much. And they did. And they did. Yep. Uh, my my feelings, I... the, my, my impression, my impression of the match, real quick. You know, very evenly contested match. Fantastic, uh, fantastic commitment at the breakdown. Uh, the energy was fantastic of both teams. I just thought Seattle was beaten by kicking away too many balls that were uncontested. I thought I thought both teams were very evenly matched. I'd probably give Glendale the, the upper hand in this game, but remembering that they've played you know dozens of games together practically is that right, Grant? I mean, they, they, this team's been together a while. Uh, Glendale, yes. Yeah, yeah. So you know, Seattle's third time on the pitch together, one little exhibition game, and then last week, and it was pre- it was pretty obvious to me that that. Uh, you know, Phil's doing a great job as a, as, a, as, a, as a player coach, but I think, you know, a coach on the sideline would have done some uh, tactical changes uh, at halftime that, that we needed to make. We just kicked away too many darn balls. The commitment, though, was fantastic on both teams. It wasn't a beautiful seeing Seattle score the try at the end. You know, the heart, the heart that it took to bring that try was just magnificent, and I think will serve to uh, bring the spectators back because that's the kind of thing, you know, you love to see in your team. Oh, they, they've totally played played all the way uh, to, to the end there. Um, but in that first half, when we're talking about heart and stuff, it, it took Glendale. Uh, they, they were bashing away at the line, but they weren't scoring oh, in seven. Amazing. They, 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 um, yep. they, uh, Grant, I mean, the defense in that first half was great from, from Seattle. Yeah, oh, absolutely. From both, teams uh, both, great. both teams. Both teams. The, the defensive commitment. But Seattle on the goal line a couple of times was fantastic. Absolutely great. I'm yeah, the physicality in I'm disappointed for the loss, but uh, but but it's it, it was a, it was just a fantastic match and a lot to a lot to bring uh, a lot to lot to bring away from. And yeah, the physicality in the first half was uh, amazing from both teams. I mean, they were really throwing their bodies around and, uh, and and into the right spots for sure. And uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of big bodies out there, especially oh. in the forwards that were uh, oh. that were pounding away and and uh, yeah, absolutely it, it, it was. Uh, <laughs> It was actually uh, I was I was sitting there watching that going man this we're gonna see some things out there that are gonna be uh, a little bit uh, uh, hairy if this keeps going on and, and I, I was surprised we didn't see a, a few more uh, a few more injuries than we did. Yeah, it was sad to see. Um, was it uh, was it Rock or, or, or White? I can't remember which one it was. What's now uh, of, of the Luke White? Uh, Luke White. That was it. Um, who who made that uh, big break? Uh, and unfortunately, looks like he, he did something to his leg yeah. and, and had to had to hobble off. So let's uh, we wish him a, a quick return uh, to action. Uh, but the, the, in the end, the only way they, that uh, Seattle, uh, that Glendale broke down Seattle was actually with with a, a bit of luck. The ball was dropped in midfield. Somehow it came out wide, whether it was kicked or passed. Uh, that created a bit of confusion in the in the Seattle defence. And then we had a hooker turned who was playing at flank because of lack of players for the evening, put the ball on his foot and charge over and uh, slide over like a, like a winger. Very impressive. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, Finoglio can do that. And, you know, he originally started out at hooker until he started putting on some beef. And then, excuse me, started out at flanker and then started putting on some beef. And, of course, I just think Fawcett's a much better hooker than, than Finoglio is anyway. So he came up through the Irish system. And, I mean, he, he I just, I think... Fawcett was the right person to have in place to start off as hooker. So, but Finoglio, he's more familiar to all of those Glendale boys at hooker, and that's something he's been doing there for a while. So, I think maybe that's what they were they were secure with. And from from what those commentators were saying, uh, it was uh, ex USA Eagles hooker re- uh, being replaced by the current USA Eagles hooker, which shows you the depth that uh, that Glendale have got uh, in that squad. Well, and, and, you know, that's going to be a painful thing come the Reg 9 window. You know, they've got, what, 13 Eagles on that squad right now. And, uh, you know, that's going to be a uh, – that, that's that, that's going to test their depth come Reg 9 time. So they were leading uh, sort of 0-11, uh, running up to, to halftime. Uh, and then Glendale messed up one of their ex- exits, um, got caught offside, and that allowed – Seattle to get some points on the on the board just before half time, and I think that was key for them. They, they needed to get some reward for all that work in the first half. Yes. Yeah, absolutely, no question, no question. And uh, it's, it's it's good to see the people who are picture bombing um, Tony from behind. Um, it's it's, the, oh, the, it's great, <laughs> the great thing about uh, about live broadcast. Um, 
The oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> There's not many quiet places. I'm behind the press box. I mean, it's loud out there still, man. It's 15 minutes after the game. The music's rocking. There's still two or three thousand people here. It's great. <laughs> and then, then it kicked off. Uh, then, then it started raining. For, or it, from, from a TV point of view, anyway, it looked like it's, the, the rain sort of started at, around about half time uh, and uh, continued for the yeah. second half. Will, Will McGee for me, um, or Will Maggie, as the or as, as as one of the commentators kept calling him, uh, really was the general that, that, that ran the show. Had a great little intercept, dropped it on his foot to, to get the ground. But he showing why he's in the Eagles setup and showing that he could yeah lead lead the team around the park and, and play sensible rugby. I think that Davis at nine and McGee at ten, you know, and then they have Campbell outside and some other players. You know, fantastic backline, but. Sean Davis is, you know, the, the two nines today were fantastic. Both players outstanding. They probably played against each other in some tests, Mac versus Sean Davis. Uh, and, and, and the two halfback pairings today were, were just great. It, it created a very, very even, well-controlled game. Uh, and uh, I, I think, you know, giving the, ball, giving the ball to that back line with those uncontested kicks was the difference in the game. I, I think Glendale probably had the, you know, probably – had the greater territory in terms of all the statistics. Haven't seen any of that yet. They clearly pressured Seattle a little more, but Seattle could have won that game very, not not easily. But Seattle was in that game the entire time, just the uncontestable kicks. And I'm sure they're going to be looking forward to playing again. And this is going to develop, Glendale, Seattle is going to develop into a great rivalry because both teams have such great followings at home. Uh, you know, we'll go there. They'll come here. It's going to be just a great series over the years. It is, but I think the, one of Seattle's Achilles' heels in this game was their line-out. Whilst they had the upper hand in the scrums, the, absolutely that yep. um, that fell to, that fell to pieces at times and sort of yep. gave up too much. I, I, I think as, I agree. I, I think as a player, you know, missing Reichert, the, the number eight, who was the captain of the team, out with uh, a head injury, I believe, from last week. Uh, you know, obviously a key a key player in the pack calling the lineouts, things like that. I thought Aladdin Shermer had a phenomenal game again today, both running around the paddock and in the lineout. Ali Khalifi, I thought, was great. But our lineouts were definitely weak. They were scrappy. The ball was very, very wet, no question. Um, uh, but, the, but again, the difference of the game, giving the ball away, those uncontested kicks, just cannot do it. So one of the points listening to Red, White and Black Eye podcast or um, the America's Rugby pod, they're talking about is... Uh, is, is, there's, a, there's a lack of tall um, height in those lock positions. Clearly, Glendale have that in oh, um, big boy <laughs> in in white um, and, um, and and rock. But um, is, is 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 that the problem at Seattle? They just don't have tall enough locks, and they perhaps there's yeah, there's not much beef there. I mean, you know, in terms of there's there, you know we don't have any 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 tall rangey guys are going to win some balls. Aladdin obviously is a nice jumper, and we're going to we're missing Riker. That could be a problem. You know, it definitely could be a problem coming down. How about the scrummaging, though? Again, you know, from Seattle. To, uh, we just didn't have the opportunity today to, to dominate the scrums. We didn't get too many We, we didn't get too many put-ins, particularly in places where we could really attack. We just didn't We just didn't have the field position we needed to really take this game today. Um, but uh, but the scrum again was the scrum again could be dominant. And another difference from last week, I think, was was uh, our 15, Matt Turner, uh, probably, yes, last week, he, he just, you know, if you'd never seen him play before, you're literally like, who's that guy? And he must have had 150, 200 run meters last week, and, 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 and until late in the second half, he, he wasn't able to, to get any room with the ball moving forward, and I think that was one of the differences in the game, too. Uh, him moving forward with some of the backs and the wings we have, uh, it just didn't happen. It just didn't seem to happen for Seattle today. They're, they're, it just We just couldn't get any breaks. We, we we were moving the ball forward, knocked the ball on. We just couldn't get any breaks. It was one of those games where you walk away and you're just like, gosh, disappointed, played very hard, could have won, and darn it, we lost. And uh, and we'll be back next time. Um, and I've, I've, I mean, Seattle definitely back. Um, and Grant, on the uh, on the Glendale Raptors side, I mean, a bit like last week, uh, in that first half last week against Houston, they couldn't hold on to the ball. They got some phases together, and then at the end would kill it, we would drop it. We saw that again from them the, this, this week. They're the best side of putting phases together ain't, um, so far that I've seen. But they make that that that. But they need to clean up that last that out wide that last that last ball going to hand. That seems to be a big big issue for them. 
And they did have a couple times where Halliman uh, was just a little bit ahead of the ball, and, and it's it's a communication thing. It seems like, and, and of course with London, he seemed to have this. He seemed to have a state a case of the stone hands today. I mean, he, uh, a couple of boys did was, on both sides. A couple of boys did for sure. Yeah, but uh, but even when the ball was dry, London seemed to have that thing going right into his hands and out of it. So that was a tough case. Davidson's the only one who really didn't have that problem, and. Uh, they didn't seem to start going to his side of the field until the second half, and 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 that's 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 an issue. Uh, Harley Davidson's really just a, a phenomenal player, and you got to get somebody like that into space. You got to put the, somebody the like the best Ron- name in rugby. The best name in rugby after Austin. Oh, yeah, yeah. Good. You've got to get somebody like that into space, and you know, put somebody like Rosalika through that space and and into a contact area so he can offload a guy like. Davidson, who can who can just uh, exploit it with with uh, with some panache and aplomb. So, and yes, yeah, so you say violence of violence of action there, rugby evangelist. Violence, <laughs> violence of, action. of action. Yeah, that I was the, that, uh, that was the by that was the byword today for the uh, for the Saber Caps. I loved it. Loved it. Um, the uh, and, and so one of the things that stood out for me, um, obviously, was was also Seattle's number number seven. Um, Tuilota, I mean, his hair is fantastic, um, but also oh, great hair! But also his tur- his turnover skills. It's, it's, um, he's 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 an, he's an absolute um, godsend for the commentator, as you can see him on the pitch wherever he is. He stands out. Yeah, um, <laughs> he's easy. You don't have to Absolutely. you don't have to worry about looking for a number with that guy. Uh, but he'll he'll go to bed. He'll get to, he'll go to bed tonight frustrated though. I mean, he 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 had some beautiful runs, and the ball just you know eked out of his hands a couple of times. Um, how you doing, sir? Just couldn't get it together. Just couldn't get it together. You know, so so uh, uh, you know, he, he, he's he's a player who just does so much, works off the ball so hard, and then in the open field, he was getting some rambling going, getting it up the field, and and, and we lost the ball. We, we spilled the ball a couple of times. Uh, very tough duty for him. And the other thing that is unique about uh, about MLR is the well, the hydration breaks masquerading or, or commercial breaks masquerading as hydration yes, mas- breaks. Um, yes. They seem to go a bit quicker this weekend. Do you, do you think they've learned a bit more that they didn't disrupt the flow quite so much? Or how did it feel in the, in the ground? Well, on the ground, no, it was it was pretty excessive in the first the, the, the first half was a little bit long, but 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 look, you know, some of the things we've been coming across in the States here, like with the, when we when we moved our D1A semifinal championships to colleges, there was all sorts of uproar about that and the decisions were made about you know, branding and money and licensing and TV and butts and seats and things like that. And and quite frankly, you know, the, even talking in the crowd today, there's some people like, well, why do we have water breaks? You know, this isn't rugby. And and the fact of the matter is, is it's a commercial break. It's dictated by the media. And I think everyone in the United States rugby community is going to need to get to get together with the fact that, you know, with the people that are providing the sponsorship and the money and the me- the media is the key. If they say we're going to have a one minute water break at halftime, I'm okay with that. Even though I'm a huge traditionalist, I'm totally okay with it. But Grant, they've got to choose the, the right time and try not to disrupt. Um, yes, w- w- one absolutely. game's kind of uh, flow, um, which I think happened I, I'm, last I'm, week. I'm still kind of I'm still kind of on the fence on this one. I don't. I know. Yeah. I, I, it's a weird. Yeah. It's a weird place to be. And, and yep. I haven't made up my mind, and I, I really hate yep. to say that to you, Paul. It's just I, I've, I've only had two weeks of this, and I haven't listened to enough discussion. I've heard the negatives. I've heard the positives now from Tony, and, and I understand the commercial value. I get that. I mean, heck, it's paying me money, right? So <laughs> it's paying the bills. And, We're going to have to pay the price for a little while there, Grant. We're just going to have yeah, to pay well, the no, price. Yeah, no, no, and I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not even against that. Don't, don't get me wrong. I'm not, yeah. I'm not saying anything against it. I'm just, I'm just in a place where I'm looking over both, both aspects and just trying to understand exactly where my place in this should be at when I go to answer a question like this for Paul because, I, hey, Paul, I'm a traditionalist. I really think we should just play on. But at the same time, I work in the oil and gas business, and you know, if you look at the uh, if you look at the at the company that you know sponsors the breaks for the SaberCats, it's an oil and gas company, and you know, I think okay, it's home. <laughs> yeah, 
I mean, it's it's kind of like okay. I mean, what do I do here? I mean, I've got to I've got to kind of juggle something here. So it, it, it's it's about keeping the ball in the air, and and I think that that's something that pro rugby didn't do that major league rugby is really trying to do and, and trying to work very hard at, and that is that is more important than a lot of things that we have not been doing over the years. When we talk to people who've been trying to move us in this direction, a lot of times we listen to them say, well, the media companies that have ignored us are ignoring us because they've wanted us to do this, 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 and this, and we haven't done those things. Now we're trying to do those things, and we're trying to give a little bit here while keeping a bit of our soul. You know, and so if one minute out of the game is a is what we've got to give, I I, I don't know yet. I I'm not I'm not totally sold on it. it, but I'm not totally not sold on it. Does that make sense? It does yeah, totally. Grant, you Grant, you and I have been working together for a little while, and and, and, and two you years I, now. We, we know each other's philosophies about this, and and I'm willing to give the traditional up for this. I mean, I, I, the things that I've learned over the past year about rugby in America. The, mon- the money's big. It's important. It's really important. More important than we could ever know uh, uh, until we don't have it. Yeah, I, I just didn't know how big the money was until today when I met a guy who wrote the checks, and he told <laughs> me the kind of checks he was writing, and I was yeah. like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's true, man. It's true. I will, let, me, Paul, let me just tell you this, though. One of the things from a business perspective uh, – uh, you know, I look at my I look at my business trying to trying to do better things, increase our customer service, best practices, things like that. And these guys at the Seawolves have done a super job. Shane Skinner and his crew, uh, they put out a letter this week that was just sort of a summary of last week, a thank you to all the ticket holders, personal thank you to all the season ticket holders, and then came out with a sort of after action report. We know the lines were too long for here, here, and here, the bathrooms and the the concessions and the whatever, and they made ag- and, they, and they let the customers, the guests, the fans, the paying spectators, the Seattle committed people, uh, and we've got a lot of new rugby people here. There are a lot of people that this is their first or second game because of the Seawolves. It's incredible. It's so cool. Um, but we, we just we just need to remember that that uh, you know by by getting the by getting the butts and seat by getting the butts and seats, Shane has Shane has has put. They're making active improvements week on week to do better customer service to provide for the spectator, and and it's it's just it's never been done before in the United States at this level, not even close. And uh, and 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 the, and the Seattle crew and the whole USMLR should be very proud, very very proud. I, but not only have they have they, have they done that, but they've also gone. You know, one of the things it's, it's it's one thing doing it; it's another thing letting people know you've done it. Um, Absolutely. So you've got Absolutely. All the, Anyone who now complains that the first time they went to it, there was a big queue, anyone else can say, oh, well, yeah, but look, they've told us they fixed it. Um, so Absolutely. They, uh, by, by understanding that they need to communicate with their, um, uh, with their audience, that's a big thing. And a lot of, uh, a lot of um, professional, much more uh, mature... In any, business you've got, in any business, you've got to... Don't do that. Right. So, yeah. In any business, you've got, in any business you've, got to, you've got to set the expectations for your customers. Set the expectation. If you're going to be a low-cost provider, tell people you're going to be a low-cost provider. They can set their expectations accordingly. The Seattle Seattle Seawolves have, have set the expectations very high, and they've met them both days here, uh, bet both games, uh, and I think it's just only going to get better. No, absolutely, totally. Um, another innovative thing that's going on, which – um, now is is apparently the, the the round patches on some of the Seattle players, which are supposed to be therapeutic frequency patches. Now, <laughs> two old school guys, is this just baloney, or, or, or is it something? Like, or, or we got some real science. Uh, we got some sports. Uh, Paul, I'm going to tell you, there's a lot of stuff coming up that that we haven't seen before, and um, and, and, and you know. Tony's going to tell you that I'm in safety, right? I'm in oil and gas safety. <laughs> it is and, it, and I'm I'm in this area of safety that's uh, that's really strange. I'm I'm on a cutting edge of stuff in a lot of ways. And we and I work for a technology company, and we talk about things that are just very very strange all the time that you may think are almost transhuman, right? And these things are that. So you're looking at things like Olive had on his temple. 
you're looking at things that can tell a doctor on the sideline, hey, this guy just took a force, a hit of force, that we need to stop him and bring him to the side and, and check to make sure he's not injured to the point that he's going to get another concussion. And and this is important. I'm going to tell you why it's important because last year, and I'm not going to name any names here, and I don't need to, but I'm just going to tell you uh, something that happened last year at a test match in, in the United States. Uh, we had a we had a test winger who got hit with some force. And when he got up, they thought he had a leg injury. And he and he shook it off and he went over to he went over to his position and he started playing again and he got hit again. And that concussion that he had at the first force broke loose and became a brain bleed. He became a a, a traumatic brain injury it became what we call a, a subdural hematoma. Now, fortunately, there was a referee on the sideline or, that was as fourth official that day who knew that there was a, a, a level one trauma center within 10 minutes of the stadium. Now, he also knew that the hospital they set up was a level two trauma center and that if they sent him to that level two trauma center, he was going to die. And they stopped it. Now, had they had that little dot on his head, they might have been able to stop him on that first hit and pull him off the field and take a head injury assessment. So we we can talk about all of these things being, hey, traditionalists, but I'm here to tell you some of this technology is going to be life-saving Absolutely. technology, and Absolutely. I am all for that. Okay, totally. No question. No question. Yep. Uh, no, I just saw a few of the players with it beforehand. I just thought it was sort of like a uh, some sort of, you know, fan thing or something i I had no idea what they were yeah you you know the the thing is a lot of these companies they they know that they know it's going to look weird so a lot of them will say hey let's figure out a way they'll get with a company that does branding and they'll say how how can we put colors on here so that it's got it's got your team colors on there right so that the fans are kind of distracted from the fact that it's a medical device Right. And it can actually come out and tell you something. You know, they don't care. The fans don't really care. But when they find out that it's a medical device, they're like, oh, cool, man. That's going to, you know, help my guy make sure he stays safe. Absolutely. And uh, Anything we can do for safety. Everything. On, on, the, on the concussion side, um, they're this, this doing great stuff. I mean, I've, I've, I've heard of one company that was putting the monitors in, their gum, in the gum shields because... Um, so that was, that was actually started by a rugger at the University of Texas in Austin. And uh, that that was uh, and he and he's still doing that. He's uh, he's he's uh, actually been pretty successful with it. Um, and then there's the Saracens and uh, one of the New Zealand teams. I've gone blank now. Uh, had patches behind the ear that was that, that was used for monitoring, um, and they were doing that that kind of stuff. And Th- those sort of things, I'm I'm t- totally pro, and I'm all, I'm I'm all behind. Them. That's great. The Absolutely. when someone talks about therapeutic frequency patches. Um, for muscle things, I get a little bit more, um, a little less kind of, a little bit more skeptical as to this, as to how much it, if it's real and how much of it is kind of a positive. It's, like, it's like the cold spray, right? Yeah, exactly. It's like the cold spray for the MLS players, you know, they come out there, cold spray. Pssst. Yeah, the magic yeah, spray, the magic sponge. Yeah. <laughs> when, you yeah. Tore, when you tore Japan and you go down, they used to bring out a teapot. It was pretty funny. The magic <laughs> teapot. Pretty funny. I might be dating myself, but that's what I saw. Oh, uh, cool, guys. Um, I, I've covered off on everything that I was going to that, that that I've got to, on, on my uh, on my nice big notepad. Um, anything anything more from you guys? Well, I mean, you're asking questions all about the Seattle and Glendale match, Paul. Yeah, let's talk. Yeah, well, this is the talk about. I mean, uh, come on. I was I was play by play commentator in another match today. Grant you're not did a nice job me. today. Grant, you did a really nice job. I thought Thanks. really nice job. Thanks. Okay, so you're this, not going to ask me. Back. Well, I, I, okay, so this, this show is supposed to be the, the, the Raptors versus the, the Seabulls uh, post-game show, but let's move on to that, and um, I'll give you my take on the game. Um, okay, go ahead. Uh, the, the screen was black on Facebook, and I couldn't see any of it. Oh, that's so, right. So that's there was right. some problems oh, that the server was outside of, our, outside of ours. We had, I mean, due to the setup behind the stands, I was, this was the first time I've ever dealt with the setup this high tech, and I was, I was blown away. I'm sitting there going... Wow, 
I'm just, I, I was, I mean, I've dealt with, I'm, I'm usually am dealing with a trailer that, it, it, and, and there's one or two dudes in there dealing with a, a tricaster and a monitor and maybe a, maybe a, a replace, a, a replay, uh, 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 doohickey. And, and I'm up in the stands just calling a game by myself, right? But no, today, I mean, yeah. So one of the one of the complaints from the week before was that the that the uh, broadcasters were on one side of the field, and they're calling the game from left to right in their view, and the and the cameras were on the other side of the field. So this week we switched it and we brought the broad the the play by play commentators to the same side of the field as the cameras, so we could call the game from the same side as the cameras. So that put us out of the press box, and uh, and into the uh, into the stands, and so they put a tent up over us. So. We had, a, we had a kind of a makeshift uh, booth, right? But hey, Brett and I, uh, we've done a, we've we've done a games and worse. So uh, we get out there, we do the job. Uh, the feed went up to AT and T Sportsnet. It got to AT and T Sportsnet. There were some problems with the connection with ESPN for the first sixteen minutes, and then ESPN Plus popped up. But Facebook Live never really popped up. There were some encoding problems there oh, that were happening at the uh, servers with a- with Facebook Live. So they're gonna oh. they're contracted with Facebook to get that fixed out for the next week. Uh, of course, the coding problems you can't really do a lot about. Uh, that's not happening at the game. That's happening somewhere else. Sure. So, so sorry so, about so, that, Paul. Um, so for those of us who didn't see it, the result was um, uh, fifty to thirty eight. Um, so it's a Saber Cats victory over. Um, uh, the over the elite. Why don't you tell us? Give, give us. I mean, it sounds like Tony, you saw a bit of the game as well. So why don't you guys, you, both of you, take it away and let me know uh, and give everyone a, an update of how it went. So the first twenty minutes were all Saber Cats. Uh, I mean, the first minute the Saber Cats scored within forty five seconds. Uh, they they uh, basically stole the ball after the elite took the took the kick, stole it, charged ahead. And uh, right off the kick, Connor Murphy dives over, dots down, and uh, I mean he he put a little dummy in the VC VC and uh, VC. Uh, everybody knows that he's electric. He's going to be a try scorer, and so it, that that dummy was just enough to set a defender outside, and Murphy dives over. Uh, then a few minutes later, ball goes to the outside, and and man, I got I really say so. There's it was a really easy try. For the Saber Cats, but a lot of that was set up because Windsor, Sam Windsor, saw the space out there. Skip pass out to Connor Mills. Mills steps through the gap. He's got Hanko Hammerschweiss chasing him. Hammerschweiss grabs him by the jersey. He's got VC outside, Kalinasau inside, feeds back inside to Kalinasau, Kalinasau in for an easy try. The second part of the first half, it's all. Elite, elite score two tries. They can't make the conversions though. Guillemin's got, I mean, both of those tries were in the corners. One of them is a beautiful kick ahead by Guillemin and Hanko Hermes twice chasing all the way to the end goal and he falls on the ball. And I mean, I, I, it was, it was a really, really pretty try by uh, Hanko. I mean, in just falling on the ball is just him and Justin Allen chasing towards the, Wards the uh, end goal, and Justin Longleggins as he is, making that giraffe run. You had one rhino and one giraffe running, and the rhino beat him. So, <laughs> and then in the second half, the uh, so I mean, the cast just, came just, just out. Quickly, we also had a, a, a um, I'm, I'm I'm just scanning through the earful of um, earful of dirt um, write up, which is a, a great podcast for those of you who who, who enjoy podcasts. Um, but also we had a, a no arms yellow no arms tackle uh, yellow card join that so first interesting well. on that so uh, so it was it was an interesting call on that and, and Matt Trueville couldn't even really see what had happened because because he really I mean Matt Trueville nicest guy in the world he's not a malicious player at all he was outside he was an outside defender was trying to make sure that the ball carrier didn't feed outside so he was basically holding his space right. And he saw that Sumption had the ball carrier and was going to basically track the ball carrier down. So he was just holding his space while the ball carrier was getting tracked down. As he held his space, as he held his space, the ball carrier continued to run directly at him. Okay, so so Trueville's like, okay, Sumption's Sumption's got him. Sumption's got him by the jersey on the back, and Trueville's like, oh, oh no! And as he and as Trueville tries to tries to adjust. 
Sumption's got him, and the, and the guy's trying to stop, but Sumption keeps running with his with his arm against the guy's back. He basically just drives him right into Trueville. Now, Trueville just basically is a, a, a standing wall there. He's static. So yeah, it's a it's a shoulder charge, okay? Except Trueville wasn't moving, so there was right, no exactly. charge. It was no charge to the shoulder. But it was a shoulder charge. Technically, it's a shoulder charge. Yeah, it was. A, it was a strange. It was a strange deal. Matt's not that type of player. It was a really strange deal. It happened so quickly, in that split second where where Matt just kind of stepped in. I'm sure he would have put his arm around, but it was like the player was pushed into him or something. It was just strange. Well, yeah, it, 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 he was yeah, lucky only to get a yellow too. He was only lucky to get. Well, no, I mean, and if by if, the if, letter if, of the law, if Trueville would have actually charged into him. Yeah, it should have been a red card all day long. Yeah. yeah. But because he was standing still, because Sumption pushed him into and, and and all credit to Derek Summers there, he stopped play. He went over and talked to Phil, his AR, and, and Phil and him convert about it and you know, sure. You know, and, and Trueville did the right thing, you know, he stopped, he checked on the player, made sure Zach was all right. You know, he and Zach have been playing rugby with and against each other for a long time. And so they you know, they've known each other a while, right? And, yep. and, 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 you know, he was, like, really remorseful about it. And he's like, hey, Derek, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do that. And Derek's like, yeah, you, yeah, I know you didn't mean to do it, but I still got to issue a yellow card. He goes, I know. <laughs> and, there, and that was it. He, he took the yellow card and went over and sat down for 10 minutes. And But they, so. but they, they, they survived that relatively well and finished 17-10 uh, at half time. Well, relatively well is kind of iffy because they got 10 points scored on them while it was in the right. bin. Yeah, oh, okay. Absolutely. So that's where the, that's where the that's points right. got to yeah. They, 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 yeah. they can see it. Okay. Um, but yes, and then, I mean, the second half... Second half was a feeding frenzy, especially when the when the full, when the uh, reserves came on. I tell you what was really uh, was really the nail in the coffin in the second half with Joy Yosefo coming on, and Joy Yosefo is a uh, that's a train without a station, man. I mean, really, is a train without a station. Uh, Thirty five meters out, Brett Mills says, "Hey, this ball is going to Yosefo," and I agreed with him. We thought it was going to Windsor first, and then Windsor was going to crash ball to Yosefo. No, Murphy uh, spins the ball out, skip past to Yosefo. Yosefo hits the tin channel as hard as he can. Uh, Guillemin wants no part of him. Ned Hodson, brave as he can be, gets over there. You know, all 200 pounds of him steps in front of Yosefo, and uh, yeah, that's not going to that's not going to work. Brad, Brad, is, is Yosefo is Yosefo related to uh, Martin? You know, I don't know. Haven't asked. I'm sure. I just, saw the, I just saw the name. I, uh, gosh, what, what, yeah. what, what, what and, a name! And, you and I will of? ask. I just didn't ask today. I mean, and it, this dude is a uh, he's a beast. You know, it says two forty seven on the. Uh, no, this guy's two sixty if he's an ounce. I mean, Brad, he, Brad, who, Brad, who are some of the players you're seeing? You know, well, Paul, one of the things that I'm I'm really enjoying about the five games I've seen for me, the MLR. The eight weeks, ten weeks, whatever it is we're going to see of the MLR here, building up into our June test series for the Eagles, the level of play that our Eagles are competing at right now, week in and week out, it's the first time we've ever had anything like this. And I really believe that the level of play, like the, the, the level of play today was extremely high. You could talk about knock-ons and kicks not being contested, but the level of commitment that's going to need to be put in by our Eagles to beat Russia and Scotland and Canada in June, uh, and it's possible. these boys are going to be these boys are going to be wearing these boys are going to be really raising the level. And as, I'm just so excited about that because I know, you know, the first test I played against Australia three weeks before I had played in front of you know two cats and a dog and you know, for the Old Beach Sound Beach in Seattle, you know, and and, and and never had this type of competition. So it's just fantastic, and, and the way it's good, the way it's going to improve our game i think i think as soon as june and let alone two to three years from now i think we're going to see some some real improved play from our eagles and one i'm going to make a I'm prediction seeing, here i'm going to go with you grant go for it i'm going to make a prediction here go i'm going to say there are going to be at least five to six surprise selections oh fair enough by yeah. gary gold I, 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 and, and, and i'm going to tell you what he's going to base them on okay all of these games are being filmed from multiple angles. Every bit of that film is being coded. 
and all of that coding is being basically put in line with each other and in a matrix and being compared one to the other. And at on, some on, point, just, this is hold on, hold on, Grant. This is Shane Skinner right here. The Shane manager, Skinner, general manager, general manager of the Skinners. We're talking to New Zealand, uh, Shane. Hey guys, just want to say congratulations. Just want to say congratulations, to Shane, on on just another incredible day here. Incredible day. Yeah, good. I'll talk to you later, man. Right on. Customer service rep, extraordinaire. There. I'm going to say exactly. that what we're going to we're going to see some we're going to see five to six surprise picks because. What we're what we're fixing to see as far as USA rugby uh, USA Eagles picks is going to be what we're seeing in New Zealand, what we're seeing in South Africa, what we're seeing in Australia is the top players playing in a single league to where they're always filmed and to where they're always put up against each other and where they have to play competitively week in week out. Now this and, is a short and, season, and yes. All, yep. Also, Grant, is, for, for, also yes, for me, for me, the, the the players have to play. The players playing against each other, that are competing for each spot, earning the respect of one another, is going to be fantastic. I mean, just it, it, having to so, look at your competition week in and week out, and, and, and front up, literally front up. And our boy, the boys did it today. Both teams. That was my and that was my next point. Is once they get picked and they get on that squad, that that respect. That, and you know this, you know, TR, you've been there. That respect you have from having played against them and beat, you know, and, and banged heads against that guy. And you know how hard he plays. You know how hard he is. And you know that he's going to go at it as hard as you are, right? And you don't have to worry about whether he's going to be there when he says he's going to be there or not. That's going to be the difference in the Eagles we see going forward as vice the Eagles we've seen in the past years. And that respect really oh, pay, pays, pays dividends on defence, doesn't it? No, trusting the guy in front oh, of you, trusting the guy in front of you, that's like, where yeah. we're going to see, see the big difference in that, and from that point of view. Yeah. And, look, and look at the defences we're already seeing. We're seeing better defences out, out of these MLR teams than we've seen out of Eagle teams yeah, in any day. Well, I mean, you can go back 10 to 12 years, and maybe there were some Eagle teams that had great defences that were like these MLR teams, but in the last ten years, we haven't seen an Eagles team that had defenses like this. Yep. Like we see, look at—I mean, look at the Glendale and Seattle teams today. This was some brilliant defenses out of these guys. Glendale was very well constructed. I mean, they—they they were hard to get through. I, you know, that we scored two tries was was, was pretty nice. That, you know, that, that game was played within the twenty twos for the first seventy minutes. Oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah. real real time. Grant, who are some of the players that you see that, you know, we don't, you know, we know the Sean Davis, the Will McGee, the Aladdin Shermers, the Ali Khalifis. Who, who are the names that we Dude, don't I, I want to tell you, music? I want to tell you a guy who stood out today, and I've Sorry already Sorry to do your job here, Paul. <laughs> I, I, I've, told, I've already posted about this on social media, and, and I'm going to pick, I, and yeah, I pick a guy from the losing team because it's important, because he really did stand out, and that's Sione Fangaiwa. Okay, and he played for, and this guy got a brace today. He had an assist. He was big on defense. He 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 stopped at least two or three other tries that the that the SaberCats should have scored. Uh, and you know he hasn't really been a big part of the Austin Elite team until today. And I I really think he just hasn't found his space right. And that's because they've had him at wing, and they started him at wing. And then they had an injury, and they moved him to in outside center. And when he moved in, when he stepped in the outside center, he really stepped up and and, and became a force. And I and this kid, man, he can he can ball, okay. <laughs> and, and if he's allowed to play at that outside center space with the, especially with the uh, confidence. That he had, that he got. Oh, excuse me, the the fullback space. Excuse me, fullback. He got when when Zach came off the field, he got put into fullback. If he if he's allowed to come into the line the way he was coming into the line today, and, and over and over and over again, and Guillemin can find him with the skip pass, or he can come in on Sonny Taylor's left or right side and and basically get in there and as as Taylor's going in the contact and take that offload. This is a guy who can really make a difference for Austin. And Austin's got some really 
strong weapons outside and face on Donahoe and Zarnecki. And they're not getting used as much because that ball's not getting out to that wing. So, you know, face on Donahoe had a strong try today because one time Fango Iwa gets, gets that ball into space and he gets through there. He cuts through the gap, gets out in there, face on Donahoe's out there. He feeds it to him and Alex is in for the try. That was a wonderfully built try from face on Donahoe um, just because of Fango Iwa. You know, and it, it's, that's the kind of stuff this guy can do. They need to unleash this, but they've got to get that stuff. They've got to they've got to learn to uh, trust their systems, and they've learned to trust their people as well. And they, I, I just don't think they're. I, I, I wonder if they're there yet or not. I don't know, but this guy is he's something else. And then of course, Joey Acefo today, first touch of the ball, first time he touches the ball in Major League Rugby, he scores a try. From 35 meters out. I, I don't even know what to say to that, right? <laughs> nice stuff. I, Brad, one of, one of the things I'm finding with... Well, actually, the well, I'm players, finding it, players still. Um, the Airful of Dirt also put the um, Houston Sabercats man of the match as Sam Windsor. Oh, very much so. Now, you know, a lot of people... There was actually a lot of discussion at, at, in the post-match at Carbock Brewery about this as to who should be the man of the match, right? And... What a lot of people don't realize is a lot of those tries that the Sabercats scored came about because of Windsor setting up everything on the field the way he did. And so Windsor is really the general out there, right? He's basically directing traffic and, and making calls about where the kicks are going to go. You know, it, it, you see you see uh, Murphy making the chip kicks he's making, right? But what you don't see is Windsor almost directly behind him, telling him where the space is without Murphy even looking at it, right? So Murphy's trusting Windsor to make to, to tell him where the space is, and then Murphy's just making that kick blind. So it's a great communication okay, so for him as well. Oh, yeah. I mean, so really, he deserves it at that. And you can see it if you're looking at it like Brett sitting next to me and doing the color commentating. That's exactly what he's looking for. He coached a kid that, I mean, his son's the, the second fly half out there, basically, and that's how he coached his kid to work as well. And so <laughs> this is basically what he's looking for in the game, and that's what he's talking about. So Windsor being the man of the match is a no-brainer. <laughs> cool. Sorry, Tony. You're you, you a little bit of a question. You, no, no, no. No, no. I, I, I just uh, I, I feel that the, the, the name players, you know, the the, the, the Traditional Eagles that are playing in the in the in the in the league have really stepped up and done a great job. And many of the many of the players, many of the players you know who they are, and obviously there's some players we don't know who they are, but uh, um, really have stepped up. You know, guys guys like Honko Kermesis. I mean, he for me for me right now he's probably the player in the league right now. I mean, he's had two phenomenal games. His work rate is incredible. Setting he's a phenomenal example, game today. Setting setting oh incredible. Setting an example for other people. Wonderful. Now, what else, Paul? I was just going to say, I'm, I'm, I'm getting myself confused. Aren't the Sonny Ono brothers also um, part of the Austin Elite? Because they, they, they didn't... So there's the three, three Sunni Ula brothers. There's sure. three of them. Okay, three of them. There's Shalom, who's at Seattle Seawoods. And there's Andrew and Roland, who are at Austin. Austin. And Roland I, can't wait, Austin. I can't wait for Austin, Seattle. So, so uh, and Roland was out this week. He, he still hasn't come off a head injury uh, medical, so... Ah, okay. So that's that's why they weren't um, why they weren't playing today. Because I didn't it's, see that. Well, uh, Andrew, was, Andrew was on as captain, but uh, but yeah. Right. The um, because I was just checking. Yeah, I was just having a quick look at the the the, the lineups and thought, hang on a second. That's uh, when you were talking about playing right. outside half. I was like, well, he's not going to get much time outside half because of those guys. But uh, no, they were um, as you say that uh, if he was going to fall back, that that would be a different story. And one thing, you know. And the Sabercats were glad Roland wouldn't play today because Roland is a hard, hard he's dude. Big boy. Man. Big boy. Hey, well, he's not even big. He's just hard. He's right. like Adam Belief, man. He's just a wall of stone. You know, he's a 200 pounds of stone just coming at you. And he was also one of the one of the key guys. I mean, he, he, he showed up the Raptors on the outside in that 13 channel. Um, oh, Shalom was something else. Hey. Um, yeah. And uh, when and, and I think that, yeah, I think... Oh, Roland, yeah, yeah, and because because the Glendale actually had a, I think had a rookie in that in that slot, 
uh, which is good to get you getting game time. Uh, and then obviously you got replaced. I don't know if I'd call Mika Cruz a rookie. <laughs> what, no, what do, um, oh, because sorry, I was listening, listening to if listening to um, the rugby pod. Um, they were saying that he's that uh, isn't there an American Eagle at Glendale that normally plays at thirteen, but he, he actually started on the bench. So Chad London has been an Eagle before, yes. Yep. But I, I mean, I wouldn't call Mika Cruz a, a rookie. Okay. He, this guy's been around and been playing a while, right? He's just young. Young and rookie, okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it's 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 like it's like you know, calling Christian Cullen a rookie when he was eighteen and coming into Super Rugby, right? Yeah. I mean, he wasn't really a rookie, right? Right, exactly, exactly. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, Rico Iwani was rookie of the season last season. He was also perhaps World Player of the Year, but that's just that, arguably. But um, that's <laughs> See, it, it, that's where we're going with this. Cool. Um, no, I'm. I'm I'm obviously learning a lot as we go along, which is great. Uh, but yeah, I've, I've Paul, is there any is there any buzz about the MLR down there in New Zealand? I mean, you know, there, there's. I, I received messages from probably four countries today. I had friends in, at the Singapore Sevens that were watching, uh, England, the UK, Japan, uh, just texting me saying, "See how the, the atmosphere looks incredible. What's going on with the league? Well, you know, are we getting that in New Zealand at all? Obviously, New Zealand is the pinnacle." And they're, you know, they might just look down and go, oh, you know, you got some Americans are playing footy, but uh, we're, we're uh, uh, please, please, I'm please. just, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, three years, three years from now, this thing goes for three years. Uh, the United States team is, is number ten in the world. I, I'm, I'm just telling you. Yeah, uh, please I agree. don't I feed our arrogance. Okay, this is this is not good. I mean, What's that? Please don't feed our arrogance. Uh, the, 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 but we want to feed your arrogance. That's <laughs> well, what we're, we're trying, trying to do here. Well, well, we were looking forward to England, New Zealand in November, that England had to play a duck in the Six Nations, and you know New Zealand struggles. So it's still going to be a great game, but uh, and it's going to be a great yeah, game. No, but actually, the following weekend yeah. they play Ireland. So, the, so for New Zealand yeah. to take on England and then Ireland, um, no, sure, that Ireland game becomes more of a uh, uh, perhaps is now yeah. is now the main draw card. But back to back weekends, fair. that's going to that's going to be a good test um, to see how it's going to be interesting. Also, Absolutely. how they balance the squad on that one. But that's perhaps a slight rabbit hole. Um, the, um, yes, indeed. <laughs> uh, amongst, amongst, sorry. Um, uh, I mean, amongst hardcore rugby fans, there's a bit of interest, but it hasn't really registered on the on, on, on the, the mainstream. Understand. The mainstream Understand. Yeah. Um, to be honest. So, what would get it registered? That's a curious question. Um, I'm not sure you want to necessarily register too early. Um, I, Time. Pro, pro rugby, time. Yeah, I mean, time. No, 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 pro, no, no, pro no, rugby no. tried the same sort of, try, try to sort of hire um, Mills Molianina to, to try and get that kind of thing and get a 100 cap um, all black. But um, I mean, everyone in New Zealand is like, well, yeah, but he's kind of retired for two or three seasons. What's the what's the big deal? So, yeah, build up yourselves. Get all um, get, get it so that it's a kind of uh, um, self, self-sufficient. Self, self-sufficient. Maybe self-sufficient. start. Maybe start. Having be able to, if you can start competing on on salaries, so you don't have to bring, so you're not losing your, your top players to, uh, to to Europe. So through players like Will McGee and stuff, come back uh, and maybe yep. even bring bring over a couple of players yourselves just to um, help bring players through. Then great. Then that's when it will start start registering. Obviously, when the USA Eagles get their first um, get, their, their, get their first tier tier one win, that'll that'll waken up a lot of people and go, hey, hang on, how did Absolutely. they become good all of a sudden? And everyone go. Well, it's because they've had four years of this rugby league, of, of this league running, that means their players uh, actually are in professional setup the whole time. Then it will start registering. Um, well, it, it, that's, that's, one that's, that's of the, the things is going. one of the things I think not everybody realizes is not all of these teams are in a daily training environment. Right. Yep. And, and that's something that's not happening yet. So when we get to that, it, yeah, it'll happen. I, and and, but we're not there yet. I mean, this is not yet a daily training environment. It's close, but it's not there. That's interesting. So, so okay, so some, some of the teams are still huge like, improvement though over semi- anything we've had. Huge improvement over everything. Yeah, there is a winning team shoots. today that still practices still practices rugby only twice a week. Ouch! Is that right? Wow, so they're still semi-pro. Okay, interesting. I, th- I thought they were all full-time. <laughs> yeah, I did too. <laughs> I thought they were full-time with the occasional club guy coming in to help. Um, for but let me tell you, it wasn't the Sabercats. <laughs> <laughs> you, 
<laughs> the Glendale Raptors are a, t- are, a t- are, a Thursday, are a Tuesday Thursday night team. I'm just I'm just wow. saying it was with the Sabercats. Okay, um, <laughs> <laughs> that's a shock to the system. Um, I'll be I'll, I'll be honest. Um, so cool, yeah. Paul, no, thanks no. for doing Paul. Thanks for doing this podcast though and evangelizing the American game. It's greatly appreciated. I, I know you have you know, what twenty thirty thousand followers. This is thank you for this. It's great. Oh, thank you very much. I got, yeah, I mean, I, I, maybe about a, th- a thousand people on, on we YouTube appreciate and it. Uh, twenty thousand on Twitter. But yeah. Um, but next week, next weekend is a fantastic weekend for me because all three games are during my daytime, so I can do all three games nice. next week. So, uh, so, nice. um, so yes, yeah, so and I'll do all three next week. Um, obviously, I was planning on doing the uh, tomorrow's game, but then realised that was Monday, eleven a.m., and I'll be at work. Um, <laughs> it's a, a shame. I, I hate it when work gets in the way of rugby. God, <laughs> it's terrible. It's terrible. It's called taking a day off. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, oh. and uh, yeah, yeah. On, on, on the quiet, I may have a beer sponsor. Now that's, hey, maybe we'll just wait and see. But that that will be a, a massive leap for me, um, because nice. even if it's only free beer, I've got a beer sponsor. sponsor. What are you talking about? You have a beer yeah. sponsor? Cool. Yeah, I'd like a beer Carbach. sponsor. <laughs> cool guys, it has been an absolute, absolute blast. Um, uh, Grant, start off with you. Let people know where they can get hold of your your fantastic content. Um, Hey, so you know, if you're gonna if you're gonna come around and look for Grant Cole, you want to look at him at Facebook at the Rugby Evangelist, or you come on Twitter at Rugby Evangelist. And at so. Rugby Evangelist is on the screen now, so you can see that. Oops, I'm pointing the wrong way over there. Um, Tony, um, why don't you let people know where the best place is to have a chat with you about rugby and, uh, and what you've got? Going sure, on. sure. I'm on I'm on Facebook, Tony Ridnell. I'm pretty active. Um, I have a blog that I write uh, about American rugby and, and some of the you know governance issues that uh, governance and, and commercial issues that are going on in the United States. It's called blog.ridnell.com, blog.ridnell.com, R-I-D-N-E-L-L. And then on uh, on Twitter, I'm at Tony Ridnell. Cool. And again, the Twitter handle is is over. Whoops, over there actually. Um, on yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Paul, the guy behind Driving Mall, a uh, YouTube channel, uh, podcast, Twitter account, and website for bringing the best in rugby opinion and um, predictions. So do check me out. Please do subscribe. I'm going for that's my big thing at the moment. It's getting lots of subscribers. So subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Apparently, clear calls of actions all the way forward on social media. Perhaps not quite like that though. I'm learning, you know. But thank you very much, and enjoy whatever rugby you're watching. 